Konnichiwa, motherfuckers. Welcome back to the show where I talk about guns. Hey, how you doing? It's your boy. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. So, today we're talking about the sniper rifle. And it sucks. A lot. I figured that today I would do uh, something a little bit different. And instead of just kind of revealing what I think about it at the end, how about we just get cut right to the chase? This thing fucking sucks. So why is that? Well, let me explain. I swear to God, I gotta get a new desk. So, the sniper rifle. It would suck as a sniper rifle. And under no circumstances should you ever try to use it for that. So why is that, I hear both of you guys asking me. <laughs> well, first, stop talking to your screen. You're gonna get strange looks from your family and probably disappoint your mom. And second, well, let me thoroughly explain. All right, so first, let's do what we normally do and explore the history of the firearm. The SRS 99AM, my god that's a mouthful, is a sniper rifle designed and produced by none other than the Halo Universe's resident firearms dealer, Mizraya Armory. For those who don't know, Mizraya is the pretty much only arms dealer for the UNSC. Kinda like that creepy guy that lives down the street that's offered to sell you his AR-15, but you're pretty sure that he's sawn off the serial number, and you're more than likely positive it's been involved in at least 15 murders. No, I'm just joking, they're actually pretty legitimate, but even still, I do find it weird that Mizraya is like one of the only companies besides like weapon system technologies, and then maybe like one other company. But we'll get to that later. It entered service in the UNSC Army in 2460, but due to its modularity and hardware updates, the sniper rifle was adopted by every UNSC branch in 2521. In 2552, the sniper rifle was updated to its S2 model after 92 years of service with UNSC. This model of sniper rifle comes in a few different configurations. However, the one we're going to be covering today is the AMB submodel. Alright, so to avoid this getting any more confusing, we're just going to refer to the SRS 99C S2 AMB <sighs> as just the sniper rifle from here on out. Okay, let's move on to the specs. Alright, so let's get some of the more normal sounding technical aspects out of the way. The sniper rifle is semi-automatic and gas operated. Mmm, yeah. That's basically where the normal specs end. Oh boy! By the way, before we get to the juicy stuff, basically gaps operated means that the rifle uses the gases released from the bullet firing to apply pressure on the action and load the next round. This is the same operation many high-powered rifles have used for over a century, with notable ones being the M1 Garand, AR-15, AK-47, and almost any rifle you see used today. Alright, so for any veterans of my content or just Halo weaponry in general, we're just gonna have to address the elephant in the room right now. So what kind of ammunition do you think this sniper rifle fires? Vote now on your phones. Did you guess 50 BMG? You probably did because that's what a sane person would think. But nah, fuck that! This is Halo, we ain't got time for that pussy ass 50 caliber shit! Unless it's for our turrets. Nah, bitch! 50 BMG is 12.7 by 108 millimeter. <laughs> that ain't nothing! You might as well shoot BB guns and throw rocks at them! Our sniper rifle fires a 14.5 by 114 millimeter. See, now we're talking! And hey, while we're at it, let's add a bunch of crazy shit to it. We're talking the beautiful 14.5 by 114 ADFSDS. What does that random string of letters after our round mean? Well, basically, it's French for fuck literally anything on the receiving end of this bullet. But nah, for real, it means armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding sabat. And above the obvious armor-piercing modification, let's look at what the other half of this letter string means. Essentially, discarding sabat means that the actual projectile is encased in a removable casing called a sabat. Simply put, this is used to fit a smaller projectile in a bigger barrel on a larger firearm that can withstand higher pressure when it's firing around. The fin stabilized means that the inner projectile has fins on the bottom of the projectile which provide, go figure, better stabilization, and thus greater precision and accuracy. Let's just say it's enough to make any self-respecting gun enthusiast cream their pants. So, what's next? Oh yeah, the size of the gun. Alright, so the sniper rifle is incredibly long. Despite the fact that this specific submodel is slightly shorter than its cousins, it's still long as hell. 
the sniper rifles measures in at a solid 66.3 inches or 168.5 centimeters. Just for further clarification, 66.3 inches is 5 foot 5, or 1.68 meters. This goddamn thing is quite literally 6 inches shorter than I am. And this is the shorter model. Good lord, that's even too much rifle for me. Normally, guns are supposed to make you feel more manly, but I swear to god this thing feels like it's got a bigger dick than me. Yeet. Okay, moving on. The sniper rifle carries four of these behemoth rounds in a box magazine and has a maximum effective range of 2300 meters or 2515 yards. That's almost a mile and a half, which is crazy. Basically, under no gameplay circumstances do you even need that kind of range. Alright, woo! We made it to part three. Why is this bad, and how does it stack up to its modern counterpart, the M107, or Barrett 50 Cal? First, let's talk ammunition. Good lord, is it gratuitously big. I mean, in all honesty, there is practically no reason for this. But surprisingly enough, this round actually exists. But let me tell you, it definitely is not used for sniper rifles. It was actually used by the PTRD-41, a Soviet anti-tank rifle developed in 1941 to counteract German tank advancements. Also, also, this round is used by other Russian battle implements such as the KPV heavy machine gun as well as the ZPU series anti-aircraft guns. Yeah, this goddamn thing is used for anti-air emplacements. So needless to say, this thing used for a sniper rifle is overkill to say the least. Any one person on the receiving end of this thing would generally be turned into pudding. Including the flood, by the way. That whole thing where they can just take one of these and just keep going would absolutely not happen. It's bullshit. Don't believe it. It's a conspiracy. Illuminati confirmed. But shouldn't that be a good thing? I mean, the Russians used them before, so at least we know we can make them. And why not use it for a sniper rifle? So what if it's overkill? At least we know what's on the other side of it will definitely be dead. Okay, 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 I'm just gonna stop you right there. To respond to that, we first need to understand that as far as the games are concerned, this is the only sniper rifle used by the UNSC. So with that said, we need to extensively make the 145 by 114 and issue it to anybody using a sniper rifle. What's the big deal, I hear you asking me? The big deal is that in this current day, this ammunition can go anywhere from $25 a round to $100 per round. Now, obviously if this round were to be mass produced, the cost would be significantly lower. However, the UNSC contracts Ms. Raya to produce the ammunition as well as the rifles. So either way, you can definitely bet that this round will still be expensive. And on top of that, these rounds are going to be excessively heavy. You gotta think, you're basically carrying around anti-air rounds on you. Anyone remember the Truth and Reconciliation? Yeah, Chief is literally hiding 64 anti-air rounds up his ass. Just take a second to think about that one. Okay, the next thing. Recoil. So, if you look at the design of the sniper rifle, it doesn't have a lot of substance to it. And for the life of me, I can't find anything anywhere saying that this specific submodel has any recoil suppression. So in other words, any dumb motherfucker who tries to shoot this thing without the bipod or any other form of recoil suppression deserves to have their shoulders dislocated for being a dumbass. And that's exactly what'll happen if you shoot this thing. You know, unless you're running around with an airtight insurance policy. Alright, this next one's gonna be quick because I already touched on it. The thing is 5 foot 5. Like I said, it is quite literally 6 inches shorter than I am. So with that said, how in God's name am I supposed to run around holding a gun that is almost as tall as me? Next, the mag capacity. Now I know in my previous video on Halo weapons, I said that Halo has a problem with impossible mag capacities. I know I already covered this with the MA5B assault rifle, but seriously, 12 rounds in a shotgun like this, there's no way that's possible. But this time around, I'd say that the amount of ammo in this gun is kind of underwhelming. The magazine carries three rounds and is able to have one in the chamber, which compared to the M107's 10 round mag capacity is kind of a letdown despite the fact that this round is bigger. If you think about it, you're not really gaining too much by having this massively oversized round. And then on top of that, you're also losing the good mag capacity that you're having with a 50 caliber round. Really, the most that you'd be gaining over a modern M107 would be the range. 
With a sniper rifle, like I said before, having a maximum effective range of 2300 meters, compared to the M107's 1800 meters or 1969 yards. However, I think it's safe to say that with the expensive ammunition, ridiculous recoil, insane length, and underwhelming mag capacity, the sniper rifle just once again isn't worth it. You guys know the drill by now. Can I get a fat F in the comments, my boys? A seriously fat F. But what do you guys think? Did I miss something? Probably. I mean, I normally do. But if I miss something, you gotta tell me. You gotta call me on that. Either way, hit me up in the comments. Like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm not doing that again. I almost wrapped around freaking headphone cord around my wheels this time. See, people? That's, that's what happens when you do stupid shit.